Well folks, I've started on my winter hiking camping trip at the Red River Gorge. Um, we got some snow last week and the snow has uh, melted and then refroze. So that makes walking on these trails a lot of fun. A lot more effort required. Yeah, it's pretty slick at times, but uh, we'll get started and see if we can do this today. I forgot to say that I started on Bison Way Trail, and I'm going up to Indian Staircase, and then hopefully over to Cloud Splitter, and then down to Gray's Arch area. Um, I just come to the first stream crossing on Bison Way Trail. Uh, not a lot of choices for getting across this without getting my feet slightly wet. You have to really pay attention to your footing even on the trails. Let's see if I can get this. Uh, even on the trails you can't tell what is snow and what is ice until you've already stepped and it's too late to change your mind <laughs> more than once I've nearly fell um, also I have the Osprey Exos 58 pack with me today first time that I've actually had it out still trudging along So uh, now we're where Bison Trail reaches Shiltawi Trace. We are going to the left toward the Red River. That will take us right past Indian Staircase. Um, I'm not going to go up the staircase. I may hit the ridge. Um, still not sure yet. So uh, to the left we go. So basically when you're walking along the uh, first sandstone formations you come to that's pretty high. Uh, to the right would be where Frog's Head is at in Indian Staircase. There's actually a side trail off of Chitawi Trace that goes up to Indian Staircase. But uh, no way would I want to go up that in the winter time. And no way would I want to go up that carrying 35 pounds on my back. Or whatever I've got. Then the ridge to the left at the end of it is where Indian Arch is at. So basically the trail is going to be making a left and I'm going to be going along that ridge there at the bottom of it working my way up to the top. It won't be long and I'll have some really nice views for you. Okay um Probably not going to be able to get all this in here, but uh, my camera has zoomed as far as it go. But this is Indian Arch. It's right off of Chitawi Trace. I uh, skipped. I skipped uh, the side trail that goes up to Council Chambers. Council Chambers, because there are a couple guys in there, and uh, you know when I'm out hiking. I just want to have my peace, and I'm sure that's probably what they're out doing too, so I didn't interrupt them. I heard them talking uh, long before they probably heard me, and I just skipped that trail. Over there is the trail I came from. You can't really see it from here. Um, you'll be able to see it when I get up a little bit farther. I can show you the opposite side or what everybody calls end in staircase. So uh, till the next update. And by the way, the snow is still kind of the same deal. 
not quite snow, not quite ice. And here is the view from the top. I'll go ahead and add that uh, originally I thought about camping up here, uh, spending the night. Um, but now that I'm up here, I remember that the reason I camp here in the summertime is because of the cool breeze that blows. However, today is probably in the 20s, and you can hear the wind probably on the mic. It's probably hitting the mic on the camera. So, uh... It's uh, pretty cold, the wind is. So probably what I'm going to keep doing is keep heading out Chitawi Trail. That will take me down to Suspension Bridge. So I've been trudging along now for a couple hours. Um, Stop to take a break. You'll see this uh, coffee thermos I was telling you about. It only holds 14 ounces. Um... And generally when I winter camp, I fill it up with coffee. And that gets me through the day um, with a hot, a hot drink to have whenever I stop to take a break. Um, also, I met a guy uh, named Nick from California, Kentucky. Um, California, Kentucky, uh, the weird thing about that is, it is just right outside of where I used to live, Maysville, Kentucky. Although I don't live there anymore. Um, we walked the trail together for a while. He's got a couple of dogs with him. Uh, he's taller than me. He has longer legs, so uh, he's also walking faster than me. And although he stopped to take a break once, he just passed me <laughs> as I stopped to take a break uh, 15 or 20 minutes later. So I'm kind of standing here. If you can kind of see, I'm, uh, I'm in the thick of it. Um, I also found out that Nick is planning to camp at Cloud Splitter. And uh, knowing that he's going to be there, I'm going to give him his piece. Still at the same place where I was taking a break. And one of the things I forgot to notice, or forgot to tell you, I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I have basically both of my jackets now attached to the back of my backpack. Um, I realized when I stopped to take this break, once I took the pack off, um, my back was sweating pretty profusely. Um, the, the back of my shirt, which also means that my base layer is soaked. Um, so it's about, uh, oh, I don't know, one, one Oh seven, according to my clock now. And the temperature did warm up considerably. So now was a good time to shed those jackets and hopefully the, the air um, the air and the warmer temperatures will allow my shirts to dry out before I set up camp. Quick update. Um, eventually we came to a part of Chitawi Trail. Uh, well, actually I did. Um, Nick is considerably ahead of me by now because I've stopped here three times. Did a couple side excursion trails. But initially um, we came to a place to where Basically, Nick is the only person who has been on the trail besides me. And uh, the snow is starting to melt. Um, even though you can maybe tell there, it's still, you know, it's several inches deep. But uh, that has made walking really fun and slippery. Um, the reason why I bring that up is I just took a pretty hard fall back about 100 feet on the trail. Um, whenever I come out here, you know, without snow on the ground, there's all kinds of places where you can sit. Like, see that log right there? You know, generally, like when you're going to have lunch or something, you can find a log that's 
laying along the trail, sit down on it, cook your lunch, or uh, eat whatever you have for lunch. Um, basically all I brought was a protein bar and some uh, snack crackers. But uh, So with snow on the ground, there's no place like that. Um, so here I am pushing, hiking now for, let's see, about five hours. You know, you figure you probably average five or six hundred calories per hour or so. You know, I've, I've burned up quite a bit of calories and haven't really replaced any of them. So, uh, Nick turned off the trail back here a little ways, so I guess that must be where Cloud Splitter goes up. And, uh, see if I can zoom in and see. There's the, uh, trail marker there. So it looks like I'm the only one now. So, I'm not sure uh, how much time I have before I get to the road. Um, it's about mm, 2.50 now. And I figure i got to start setting up camp around 4 or 5. Uh, hopefully I've got a time to get across the road. Uh, but it's slow going uh, in this snow. I ain't going to joke. So, uh, until the next update. This is actually pretty cool. Let's see if I can zoom in. So now I am uh, going back toward the suspension bridge and the trail's not really marked very well here. But if you, I, I kind of hope this shows up. You can probably see there that the trail appears to go that way. So that's where I'm going until the next update. This is always a pretty good sign that you are on the trail. Can you see where the log's been cut? So, apparently my guess was correct. Until the next update. I probably won't be able to hold this still. Um, but right up there on top of Cloud Splitter in a red shirt is Nick. So it looks like he made it to Cloud Splitter. Let me zoom out and show you how far away I am. I am way over on another ridge. <laughs> And it was just funny. I turned around to look at Cloud Splitter and I was like, oh, there's Cloud Splitter. I wonder if I can see Nick. And sure enough, I could. So uh, there's a view of the valley below. Nick's kind of like got the, got the king's nest up there all to himself. And I am probably going to have to set up camp on this side of the river. I've about run out of room in daylight. So, uh. As soon as I find a place, I will uh, try to get some footage. Well, this is where I'm calling camp tonight. Definitely not my first choice. But I'm quickly running out of daylight. So it's a choice. 
and I noticed as I was walking that I come to a spot where the wind was no longer blowing and I realized I had a mountain over there a mountain over there a mountain over there and a valley over here so basically I am three sides covered by a mountain and uh, very little wind so my DIY under quilt is hanging right there uh, first thing I notice is it's obviously too wide uh, most under quilts are 48 inches and this one is 54 so I'm probably gonna have to take a couple inches off of it but I think it's gonna be okay um, as you can tell I've got an Eno hammock it's actually the uh, the uh, double Eno double nest um, I'm kind of hoping I'm not going to need the pad, but I actually brought a closed cell phone pad. Just in case that the under quilt isn't working, I can always use it as insulation in the bottom. Um, it did come in handy to lay my stuff out uh, of the pack so it wasn't on the ground. And uh, now I'm going to get some food cooked and uh, eat and rest because my legs are killing me all right stay tuned for the next update all right so basically i got the tarp set up um i basically just tied off to some trees um with all the snow on the ground the chance of getting a stake to hold would probably be summer not at all and basically you got all these really small trees um and i basically just bent it over uh, obviously took care to not break it and then I did a knot that will basically ties one tree to the other and it looks like you might be able to pull that line up but you actually can't because of the way that it's wedged in there on the other side I did similar I tied off to a small tree here and down there I tied off to a bigger tree. So uh, sleeping is set up. Now time for lunch, dinner. I hear a stream close by, a little low on water, but I had enough to fill this up. Um, and my thermos is serving as my rock or a log or something to put my stove on. That is the Stanley uh, cook set that I brag so much about I have lighter cook sets but I absolutely love that why it comes with that little cup right there as you can see I'm ready for some coffee and uh, this seems to be working pretty good now till the next update so this is my homemade cozy Basically, I use that for when I dehydrate meals. So, basically, you put your dehydrated meal inside there. Uh, cut the top off. Pour the water in when it's hot. And uh, fold the plastic over a couple of times. And then close the top on the cozy. So, it works really well. Until next update. Quick update. There is nothing finer. And eating a home cooked meal while you're camping. This is my dehydrated chili. Turned out great and uh, still warm. It's been probably a good 20 minutes since I added the water to it. I got tied up doing things around the camp trying to get everything ready before it gets dark. So until the next update. Well, <clears throat> hopefully you can see me. Basically, it's uh, nighttime now. Um, I've been laying here. Uh, not too cold. My feet are a little cold. I have uh, dry socks <laughs> that I meant to put on are actually stuffed inside my hard shell jacket. Um, I took them out of the backpack 
out of the clothing bag, stuck them in my jacket to warm them up, and I just kind of got comfortable in here. Um, I had to get up once to go to the bathroom. Um, I have a pair of flip-flops that I use uh, so I don't have to put wet boots on, and I've just not got around to uh, putting the warm socks on. Um, basically, the under quilt seems like it's doing pretty good. Didn't re realize till I actually got here that I forgot my trekking poles. Um, funny thing is, is I'd actually, uh, right before I left the house, was thinking, don't forget your trekking poles, and then I forgot them. Um, so that kind of made it difficult to walk. I also had that hard spill, hard fall. Um, no injuries from that. I mean, even like the scratch doesn't hurt now. I forgot I almost always bring a pair of sweatpants and a sweatshirt to sleep in. Even when it's winter time, I change out of my clothes uh, because generally my under quilt or used to be my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag would be sufficient to keep me warm. Um, and and then plus having cotton clothes is uh, a little bit softer and you just sleep better. But So basically I have wet pants on and the uh, you know the the calves or the uh, ankles of my pants are wet from walking in the snow and then the ankles of my base layer are wet from walking in the snow and then my socks are wet either from walking in the snow or sweating I'm not sure which um, but really everything from like my knees up are, are warm very warm I'm very cozy uh, and I just keep delaying changing the socks because I know I'm going to have to get up and go to the bathroom again and then I risk getting the uh, dry pair of socks that I have wet so I'm going to put off putting the socks on as long as I can. They're still warm inside my jacket. And uh, it's been dark now for about an hour, so I'm kind of guessing it's 7.30ish. Sunrise is at, uh, I believe, between 6.30 and 7. So my upper body has on my uh, silk base layer. And then I still have that shirt that I had on. Um, after the uh, shirt, I actually put on a Marmot uh, downfield uh, vest. I actually use that when I summer hike for like cold nights. It doesn't have sleeves in it, um, but I also usually use it when I uh, camp in the winter time too. So then on top of the Marmot, I have the uh, the Russell lightweight jacket. Then I have the Russell hard shell jacket, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the pants that I have on are a camouflage pant. Um, they're kind of unique in that inside the legs they have like sil nylon, like hammock material. And then there's some sort of insulation in the leg. So generally, um, that in my thermal uh, underwear is all I have to wear for my lower body. Um, but because my pants got wet and because my socks are wet, it actually is telling my whole body that it's cold, even though it's not. So I'm just going to put off changing the socks for as long as I can. Uh, maybe another two or three hours. Because I just know I'm going to have to get up probably as soon as I get done recording this to go pee. And then I'll have about a three hour break. Um, so I'll keep doing this until it just gets to be too unbearable. And then I'll put the dry socks on. But uh, until the next update. It's about ten minutes till five in the morning and it just started raining. Um, I knew on this trip they were calling for rain Sunday afternoon, um, but having it start in the morning is gonna make the hike out a lot of fun. So uh, it woke me up. And uh, nothing else really to report, so. Hopefully there's no snot on my face. That's one of the downfalls of sleeping outside in the winter. Until the next update.
as you can see, it's starting to get daylight. Um, it's been raining on and off since about 5 a.m. At 7, it was raining actually pretty hard, or at 6. It uh, rained hard enough to where it woke me up, and then I was really dreading the probably, I'm going to estimate, four or five hour walk back to the car. Um, the other thing that happened too was at about that same time, my body said, it's nature time. And I'm like, no body, we never do nature time till like 10. But uh, it was going to win. So I went through this ordeal of uh, trying to decide if I was going to risk getting wet or put on a my uh, frog togs parka and risk uh, a max accident, which is a man accident. Uh, about the time I was contemplating all that stuff, the rain let up just enough for me to say, go ahead and get wet. I've got this hard shell jacket on. It's probably not going to penetrate that. The uh, full face mask toboggan I've got on is going to be coming off when I start hiking anyways. Um, so basically I snuck off into the woods and did my thing. Um, this is probably going to be the last update. I just realized that my battery is getting low. And basically the plan for today is to uh, probably no sooner than I hit uh, stop on this, I'm going to slam this campsite away. And what that means is no stuff sacks or nothing. Just throw it all into the backpack so I can get moving while the rain is, uh, seems like it's stopped for right now. So, uh, you know, the, the plan is to quickly get everything packed up and get to hiking. So uh, I'll try to do an update along the way, but we'll see how the battery goes. Until next time. So, uh, snow and walking sticks kind of go hand in hand. Just like mornings and coffee. I've not had either. <laughs>